Hello and welcome to Safe Pasture. My name is Sherry Hammers and we are continuing on our study of a book by Andrew Murray called The Holiest of All. We stopped last time talking about how people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and I wanted to continue on in chapter two of Andrew's book talking about why the son was the one that had to speak to us. And he talks about on page 57 that the one object of the book of, of um, Hebrews is to set before us a heavenly priesthood of Christ. That's what we're going to be majoring on, is Jesus being our um, high priest and what that really means and how that affects our life here on earth. And the heavenly life that he wants us to, to understand um, and give us div his divine power for us to be able to access. We're going to get all to that a lot later, but... He also says, let us grasp and hold firmly the difference between the two stages. Um, and he's talking about the stages of God speaking to us. Like in the one, the action of man is more, is more prominent. So he's talking about the Old Testament, how God spoke through the Holy Spirit to the prophets, which was external. And then the other one where he speaks in Jesus in the New Testament in the Son who bears and brings the very life of God to us and brings us into living contact with God himself. So in the one, it's the human words that occupy and influence and help us to seek God. So it's human words. Like in the Old Testament, the prophets had to give human words. But in the New Testament, God gives us, uh, reveals through divine indwelling, he reveals his power within us, in the heart. And he also says, one may know much of the Bible and the words of God and yet remain feeble. What one needs to know is the living word in whom God speaks within in life and power. When a believer just tries to understand God through study and meditation of the word and yet feels like they failed to reach God. How many people have had that happen? You're like, I'm studying and studying and... I, I just, I'm not feeling, I feel like my head's full of all this knowledge, but my heart is still empty. He says, it's because they've missed the living son who only comes by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The living word gives life and power. The heart must be open to receive him. So that was kind of wrapping up chapter two, why the son has to speak. Now in chapter three, which was entitled the son the glory of his person, we go back again. We're still hanging out in Hebrews 1, 1 through 3. So I'm going to read those scriptures right now. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. I looked up that word brightness in the Strong's. It's 541. It means a light flashing forth, radiation, gleam, an off flash, effulgence. So the brightness of his glory I, it, I, to me, it's inconceivable, even with a little bit of insight on the Strong's there. But Andrew Murray says that effulgence means outshining. So we're going to get a little bit different uh, aspect here. He says, upholding all things by the word of his power as the sun, it is the S-O-N, it is he alone in whom the unapproachable and utterly incomprehensible glory of God is made manifest, through whom is mediator the uncreated God and the works of his hand can come into contact and fellowship. His relation to creation rests on his relation to the father. So when you understand Jesus is the mediator between the father and us, I mean, there had to be someone that could bring the word um, and indwell in an indwelling type way, an inward way. And so he is the outshining of God's glory and the express image of his substance. So Andrew says here, as we only know the sun, the S-U-N, by the light that shines from it. I mean, that's really all we can see, know of the sun 
is seeing the light and feeling the heat that comes from it, right? So is Christ the outshining, the revelation of God's glory. So Christ was the one that revealed to us the glory of God. As the light that shines from the sun is of the same nature with it, so the S-O-N, the, the sun, is one nature with the Father. So the light coming from the S-U-N, the sun, is the same nature as the sun. And so Jesus is one nature with the Father, God of God. So this thought underscores the fact that we need a personal relationship with God that is growing. We can't just rest content that we've made a, a commitment to God and we're done. We can't have a superficial external knowledge of God. So for us to have Jesus shining out of our lives, we must have that fire within us. The bright, okay, pulpit commentary says, the brightness of his glory, uh, though yet in classical Greek, carrying with the idea, carrying with it the idea of light, um, it says it's in the Hebrew, it denotes the splendor surrounding God manifested on Mount Sinai in the Holy of Holies, in the visions of Ezekiel, and regarded as existing eternally above the heavens. I mean, it's still, we're trying to learn this, but it's still difficult to comprehend that. I'm going to say this really quickly because um, I think I'm nearly out of time, but Romans 5.5, 5, it says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The fourfold glory in which the word this is what Andrew says, the fourfold glory in which the words has set him before us. He is the heir of all that God has. He is its creator. He is the upholder too. He is the outshining of God's glory and the perfect image of his substance. And he also says, let us turn away from earth. Let us meditate and gaze and worship until he who is the outshining of the divine glory shines into our very heart. I just think that's a beautiful way of trying to understand Jesus is the outshining of the Father. And that's why we need to make sure that we are continuing and striving to, um, to, to grow within him, to understand him and understand the part, what he's trying to do in our lives and being our very life. We have to continue to get our gaze off of things of this earth and onto him so that we're filled completely with his outshining of the Father. Anyway, that'll wrap up this little chapter three of the holiest of all. Thank you for joining me and hope to see you again soon. God bless.